Hi, I'm the Wander Newbie, it's time for Record Keeper. Uh, today, we have our 16th Crystal Tower, according to my naming of Crystal Tower uh, images. Here it is, Curse of the Sorceress. Um, this is a very mediocre Crystal Tower. <laughs> It does have a very interesting, you know, the very interesting Lady Lilith fight, that's about it. Uh, because the idea Feral and Death Machine are very much whatever fights. But yeah, I feel like we've just gotten to the point where Crystal Towers are like nothing fights, which I guess is why they eventually phase them out. I think? I was like, I cannot remember announcements of Crystal Towers in Japan anymore. It, it, unless, like, there's such nothing fights for Japan at this point that I don't even see threads or anything on Reddit. Which I'd believe that. Also, this is going to be a bit too load because we're using big boy soul breaks. Uh, if Crystal Towers go away, what's the main source of five star moats? Um, I believe they just start. Um, like, like, it's all the new side events. Oh, right, you do that. How could I forget? Oops, I put Flash Disaster on you. Man, where was my brain when I was setting up this party? I'll tell you where. Looking at the clock and realizing that it was 6.30 and my parties weren't built yet. So the boss has done, what, two attacks at this point? Two attacks into this spell. I feel like that's too early. Oh, yeah, alright, he cast death, but... Okay. 
but I had death resist, so it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, we got there. And we're safe. Who in the world is this boss? She's from, uh... Final Fantasy XI? So... I shrug at the screen as I say, ha ah. saying that she's probably like super important to actual 11 like I'd believe that she seems it it's just uh huh <laughs> I stand over here making the very cliche joke of who played 11 the answer is a lot of people that game went on for a really long time A lot of people make the joke of, who played 11, her, 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 but, uh, a lot of people did. It was very popular. Hey, uh, it's fine. So, as a, a sidebar, Dancer being a DPS in Final Fantasy XIV makes sense to me as somebody who has played a lot of Final Fantasy V, where Dancer is a DPS.
Yep, Mog in six is also a dancer and he's a DPS. Like, a lot of dancers are either two things in, in Final Fantasy games they are either a debuffer or a damage dealer, except for in 11, where I guess they were a healer. But uh, yeah, for those unfamiliar with Grand Blue, that axe that I just showed right there is... a thing. Uh, with the method I'm doing it, so to explain what it takes to do an Eternal is like a thousand steps. Okay. Here's the thing, all right, furry tractor. But let me, like, let's think about it this way, all right? To make an eternal is like doing the, um, the the Final Fantasy fourteen relic weapon, like the base original like two point oh relic weapon, up until, let's say Atlas. Or like, yeah, yeah, let's say Atmos, alright? Um... Then, making the gold axe is like, fi or like the golden weapon is like, finishing the weapon in and of itself. Uh... Right down to... I guess this would be more of a 3.0 analogy. But right down to the part where you have to destroy the weapon to make a new one. Because you make that relic weapon, and then you have to eat it <laughs> to get 50 of the golden shards. And then you need another 50, which requires you to make another 10 of the base form of the weapon, unless you want to spend a really rare material, and eat all 10 of those to get another 50 shards. And then you slam those into a weapon, and that makes this super cool gold weapon out of a silver relic. Which was a whole nother thing. And then you look at that gold weapon and you're like, Yeah, that's a cool weapon. And then you crush that. Um, but yeah, no, you go through all this process to make a really cool gold weapon, and then you destroy that, because then you get a pure weapon soul. And that's what actually lets you start the process. For real. Because then you're not even done! <laughs> Once you get the soul, then you have to do a thing, and then you can uncap the character, and then you can level the character to 100. And then once the character is level 100, then... Then you're done. Kind of. There's one more thing to do. Like one more little fate. Uh. Oh no. It, like I said. The, making the gold weapon is like finishing the Zodiac weapon. Because of the silver relic grind as well.
Yeah, this boss existed. I didn't use any soul breaks except for I, I, I did damage with soul breaks. Like, he easily could have skipped using soul breaks and beat it faster. There we go. So in order to survive a later thing, we're literally going to have Alara just put shields on everybody. Also, uh, this fight has a gimmick that we're not going to see at all. Which is... If you, uh... If you leave Cypher up long enough... Adia starts healing him. To fool. I should have held that off. I do not need to instant cast that. Ah, there we go. We have salt. That's probably because I fumbled my uh, commands on turn one. Now we enter the real fight. So, Adia here, her main gimmick of this version of the fight is gravity. Um, she has a number of other deadly things such as uh, dispels and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, but... So when she enters her phase one here, she's going to hit you with a 50% current HP. Uh, which is pretty rough, as you saw right there. At the start of week and the other phases, she hits you with a 50% max HP, or 40% max HP. So if you are not being careful, she can just drop you. Which is why we are just gonna sit on Alara right here with that uh, that ultra. The sad thing is she still has super reduced health for Cypher being there. So with any amount of real big boy damage coming in, uh, she is very fake. 
It's mainly, hey, do you have an instant medica of any sort to deal with the one dangerous transition that you're going to hit in this fight? If yes, then congratulations, you won. I instant casted a soul break, and oops, there goes half your life. Sad but true. Which is why, like I was saying at the start of the stream, um, there really needs to be like a hard mode Crystal Tower, but again, I think Crystal Towers are going away, so not too much of a, a thing they can do there. But hey, we can at least see the Crystal Crew. So that's it for Crystal Tower number 16. Um, again, these are getting way simple. I don't want to harp on that. Uh, but, eh. I think they were fun while they lasted. Well, I will see you next time.